The United States and the Western Allies have pulled out of Afghanistan. But has the conflict with Afghanistan ended? Or has it only begun? Where are the Afghans identified in the pages of the Bible? And along with them, what about Iran? What about Western Pakistan? That region of Iran, Afghanistan, and Western Pakistan has been the hotbed of conflict that the United States has been involved in for the past 20 years, the United States and the NATO allies. Does the Bible say something about that specific region known today as Iran, Afghanistan, and Western Pakistan? Well, before I get on with this topic, I want to offer you this free booklet, Persia in Bible Prophecy, free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This article identifies these people and it goes through the many prophecies that show that Iran, Afghanistan, and Western Pakistan are clearly identified in the pages of the Bible. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. The richest, most powerful group of nations on Earth, the United States and British Commonwealth, are part of one of the most mysterious puzzles of all time. The prophecies of the Bible mention such small nations as Libya, Syria, and Ethiopia, but they seem to omit all reference to our peoples. How could such important nations be left out of inspired prophecy? This mysterious puzzle is unraveled in the full-length book, The United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy. This book reveals the true identity of our peoples from the pages of your Bible. And yet it goes beyond past history and shows you what to expect in the future. For your free copy of the United States and British Commonwealth in Prophecy, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca for your free download. Iran is a sworn enemy of the United States. They constantly call the United States the Great Satan. They constantly call for Israel to be wiped off the map. It is no secret that Iran wants to control the Middle East. It is no secret that Iran has their tentacles all over the Middle East, that they fund terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, terrorist cells in Yemen and even in Syria. And now that the United States has pulled out of Afghanistan, now the Iranian regime is forging closer ties with the Afghan government. According to this article, it says here, some years ago, Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khomeini denounced the Taliban as sworn enemies of Shia Muslims. But after the United States toppled them in 2001, he not only sheltered them, but now is veering Iranian foreign policy towards closer ties with them. And then it says the fact is the regime and the Revolutionary Guards have extended their tentacles and their money in both the Afghan government and the Taliban. So now they're making their way towards Afghanistan as well. Now, these peoples of Afghanistan, Iran, and even Western Pakistan, can, be, can they be identified in the pages of the Bible? Well, when you look into history, you will find that these peoples are the actual descendants of the ancient Persians that you read of in the Bible. As it says here from World Factbook under Iran, it says the Persians are an Iranian ethnic group that make up over half the population of Iran. And then this article in Travels in Asia and Africa, it says the name Afghan designates the Pashtun people since ancient times. These peoples were called a tribe of the Persian. It says there's a total of 62 million Pashtun people in Afghanistan and many of them reside in Western Pakistan as well. And that's from the Wikipedia article under the Iranian peoples. So these peoples are the Persian peoples. Now, are there any references to Persia in Bible prophecy? Well, we, when we go to Daniel, the 11th chapter, especially in verses 40 through 45, because it is set in the time of the end, as it says here in verse 40, and at the time of the end, we read of a war between the king of the south and the king of the north. And if you read our booklet, The Middle Eastern Prophecy, we show you that verses 40 through 43 perfectly describes the Gulf War that took place in 1990 and 91. We have identified the king of the south, not in the south, but the king of the south. There was a southern coalition of Gulf states and a 
became the leader of that coalition, and he became the king of that southern alliance. So this Saddam Hussein was the king of the south, and we have identified the king of the north as the president of the United States of America that leads that large alliance called NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. He is the king of the north, not the king in the north, but the king of the north. And so Daniel 11, 40 through 43, perfectly describes, describes the Gulf War that took place in 1990 and 91. But then we see a shift in Daniel the 11th chapter, verse 44. It says, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. That's the king of the north. Now we show you in the article and in the booklet, Middle East and Prophecy, that these two words, east and north, actually mean old Persia and Media. We find prophecies of the king of Persia, Cyrus, in Isaiah the 41st chapter, verse 2 and 25, and Isaiah 46, 11, we find prophecies of the east and the north, and it's describing Cyrus, the king of Persia, and it's the same Hebrew words that Daniel uses here in this prophecy. And then the K&D commentary, plainly says here, this ravenous bird, which is, of course, Cyrus, it says the east is Persia, and the distant land, the northern part of Media. It's the same two Hebrew words that Daniel uses here in Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 44. So the east and the north mean old Persia and Media. And it says here that tidings are coming out of this area. Now that word tiding can mean reports, announcements, doctrines. You've heard of the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Well, here we see troublesome tidings coming out of Iran, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. Now in that area, in 2001, we heard announcements coming out of there, calls for jihad against the West. They announced that they were behind 9-11. They announced that they were behind the London bombings and the bombings of the USS Cole and the Madrid bombings. They were behind it all. And they're calling for jihad against the West. And of course, it troubled the king of the North, especially 9-11. And then it says that tidings out of the East and out of the North shall trouble him. And it says, therefore he, the king of the North, NATO, the president of the United States, shall go forth with great fury. Do we remember the fury when the Twin Towers fell? To the point, the Western powers were so furious that they invoked the Article 5 of the Charter of NATO that says that you attack one of us, you attack us all. And they were, of course, furious about what happened in London, Madrid, the USS Cole, and, of course, the straw that broke the camel's back, what happened to the Twin Towers in 9-11. And, of course, everybody was furious of what happened. So, again, they invoked the Article 5 of the Charter of NATO, and it says, with great fury to destroy and to utterly to make away, or as it should read, annihilate many. NATO went into Afghanistan to annihilate the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda network. Daniel eleven forty four 44 perfectly describes the war on terrorism. Now, when I come back, I'll show you a couple of more references to Iran and that Iran, that NATO will attack Iran in the near future. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him, and Daniel the prophet came to explain what that dream meant. At first he saw a head of gold, and that was the Chaldean Empire, his empire. After that came the arms of silver, and that was the Persian Empire. After that empire came the torso of brass, and that was the Greco-Macedonian Empire. And after that empire came the two legs of iron, and that was the Roman Empire. After this came the part potter's clay and part iron, which is NATO and the EU in our modern day. And then the iron mixed with miry clay. That is the last resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire that will fight Christ at his coming. For more details, log on to our website at britishisrael.ca and download your free booklet, Who, What is the Beast of Revelation? Free of charge off our website, britishisrael.ca. The conflict between Afghanistan and the United States is not over. 
Daniel, the 11th chapter, shows us major events that are happening right now in our time. And in verse 45, we see a shift happen towards the land of Judah. And we see that the king of the north, which we have identified as the president of the United States, the king of the north occupies the land of Judah to save Judah, as it says here plainly. It says, he, that's the king of the north, the president of the United States, shall plant the tabernacles of his palace, that's military occupation, between the seas and in the glorious holy mountain. Now, most biblical commentaries will tell you that the reason why the king of the north occupies Judah, when you look at the context, is because of tidings out of the east and out of the north, old Persia. They are going to receive reports out of there of war, of calls for jihad against the Israelis. And you're going to see a war between Iran, most likely, and maybe even Afghanistan will be in it as well, between Iran and the Israelis, to the point where the king of the north comes in and saves Judah. And I showed you this in another broadcast called Judah Shall Be Broken. And I go through with you Isaiah the 14th chapter, and it talks about the root as it says here, Isaiah 14, 29, God says, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestine, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. Talking about Judah. Of course, the Palestinians are rejoicing because Judah is broken. In Isaiah, the 22nd chapter, I show you that Jerusalem is attacked and the king of the north comes in there and starts repairing Jerusalem. So the Israelis are going to be attacked by Iran, and maybe even Afghanistan will be part of it, but it's going to come out of old Persia and Media. And God says here in verse 30, God says, I will kill your root. And who funds Hamas? Iran. Why does the king of the north move into Judah? Because of Iran. I will kill your root, that's Iran, with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Who is this he that slays the remnant? And well, that he in verse uh, 31, it plainly says here, for there shall come from the north a smoke. And the smoke, when God talks about smoke in biblical prophecy, it means a huge army. So out of the nor north, a huge army is going to come in. And then it says that the Palestinians send ambassadors to this northern army. And it says, what shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? And it says here that the Lord hath founded Zion and the poor of his people shall trust in it. So the king of the north says they are coming in to save Judah. So the king of the north, the president of the United States, comes in to save Judah. So there's going to be a war between Iran, maybe even Afghanistan, and the Israelis to the point where the king of the north has to come in because he hears of these tidings, these reports coming out of there, and he has to come in and occupy Judah to save Judah. Now, when I come back, I'm going to show you another prophecy of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, to show you that God's anger is on the land of Iran. And Iran is going to be destroyed, but that's still not the end of Persia in Bible prophecy. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. I said, well, hmm, guilty. <laughs> Download your free booklet, Is There Really a Hell Fire? at BritishIsrael.ca or call or text for a free hard copy at 905-447-4415 or 416 in Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verse 1, here we see a prophecy about Damascus. 
And in this prophecy, it talks about another land, the land of Hadrach, as it says here, the burden of the word of the eternal in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof. Now, when you look at the the ISV version of the Bible, it actually says that Damascus and the land of Hadrach are confederates. Now, what is this land of Hadrach? Well, the k &D commentary plainly says here, it says, consequently, the land of Hadrach must denote a land hostile to the covenant nation. Of course, that's Israel or the kingdom of God and can only be a symbolic epithet descriptive of the Medo-Persian Empire. It says here, Zechariah chose this symbolic name for the Medo-Persian monarchy. So much is certain that the choice of a figurative name was much more suitable in the case of the dominant empire at the time, which is, of course, the Persians. So the land of Hadrach means the Persians. And it says here that the Persians and the Syrians are in a confederate together. And that's exactly what's happening today. That's Syria. And we see Iran in Syria, and they are in an alliance together. And it says here that the land of Hadrach and the land of Damascus shall be the rest thereof. Now, what does that mean about the rest? Well, it says here plainly that it means God's anger shall rest on those whom he punishes. And you can read that in Ezekiel 5.13, Ezekiel 16.42, 24.13. It means God's wrath is going to rest on these two nations. Now, there are prophecies that talk about the destruction of Damascus. And it's here in this prophecy is also talking about the destruction of Iran. And who destroys Iran? Well, God executes his wrath through his people, Israel. As it says plainly in Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, he calls Israel his battle axe that executes his wrath on nation and who nations and who is modern day Israel today? The United States and the British Commonwealth of Nations, which of course make up the bulk of the alliance called NATO. So NATO is going to in the near future, destroy Iran. Now, when that happens, then there's another player that's going to make his presence known in geopolitics, and that player is China. And when I come back, I'll show you a scripture that shows you that China is going to be in alliance with end-time Persia. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. The mighty Roman Empire had everything. Plenty of leisure time. Their own new morality. Enormous military might. The religion of their choice. Political freedom. What went wrong? Read The Modern Romans, a 93-page lesson of history ignored. The Modern Romans asks, can we afford the grandeur of Rome? After the Afghan pullout of the United States, the Taliban announced a major partnership with China. After 20 years, $2 trillion, and countless lives lost, China moves in and has a partnership with Afghanistan, and of course, it doesn't cause China a thing. Notice what this article says. It says here, the Taliban have announced that China will be their main partner and will help rebuild Afghanistan. According to Asia Today, the Taliban have an interest in China's Belt and Road Initiative and see it as a revival of the ancient Silk Road. China will be our main partner, this person says, and represents a great opportunity for us because it is ready to invest in our country and support reconstruction efforts. He goes on to say that he believes China will be helpful in utilizing Afghanistan's rich copper resources and will form a pathway to global markets. So now we see China in Afghanistan. Now, biblical prophecies show that NATO is going to attack Iran and destroy it. Now, when China sees that, obviously, they're going to feel threatened. They're going to feel their security is threatened. And biblical prophecies show that China is going to give NATO that deadly blow that's going to break NATO apart. 
In Numbers the 24th chapter, verse 24, it says that the ship shall come from the coast of Kittim. That's the South China Sea. And of course, we hear reports out of the South China Sea about Taiwan, about the military bases that are built on these artificial islands that the United States says is international waters and shouldn't be controlled by China. So we're, there's trouble out of the South China Sea. And if Iran gets destroyed, and Iran is a kind of a partner in the Shanghai Corporation Organization, what they call the NATO of the East, if you attack Iran, China is going to feel threatened. Their security is going to feel threatened, and they are going to attack NATO, and NATO is going to break apart, as the biblical prophecies show. Now, after NATO breaks apart and falls, then we see that the Great Tribulation is coming. In Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse 45, it says that he, the King of the North, the President of the United States and NATO, he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Then it says, at that time, it says in Daniel, the 12th chapter, verse 1, that the Great Tribulation is going to start. And the Great Tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. And it is the destruction of the United States, the British Commonwealth of Nations, and the peoples of Northwestern Europe. And in Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, here we see the destruction of Ephraim and Manasseh, the United States, and the crown colonies of the British Empire, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. Notice here, Ezekiel 38.1. God says, the word of the eternal came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog. And if you read our booklet, China and Prophecy, we show you that China is Gog. The land of Magog, that's the Mongolians, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, that's Manchuria and Tibet. God says, prophesy against him. Now notice verse 4, it says, I will bring you forth all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So here this huge army coming out of China. And then we see other nations assembled to China, with China rather. And verse 7, it says, Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company. These are these nations that are with China, that are assembled unto you. This huge alliance. And as I said, we have the Shanghai corporation organization, the NATO of the East. And God says, be thou a guard unto them. Or you look into the Hebrew, it means that Gog is the leader of this huge assembly. Now notice verse 5. One of these nations is Persia. That's Afghanistan, western Pakistan, and even remnants of Iran who are left. They'll probably be part of this uh, huge assembly with China. They're already a kind of like a partner of the Shanghai Corporation organization, organization already. So that include can include maybe parts of Iran as well. So the war with Afghanistan is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. It says here that Afghanistan is going to be part of this huge army with China, and they are going to attack the United States and the crown colonies of the British Empire, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Notice verse 8. After many days you shall be visited in the latter years, that's the time setting of this prophecy, you, talking about Gog, shall come into the land. Now, you look at the Hebrew word, it should read nation. You shall come into the nation. Here is, a, here is the nation that they want to attack. Their focus, is, their focus is in on this particular nation. Notice, you shall come into the nation that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people. What nation calls itself E Pluribus Unum? The United States of America. This is the, the main focus of China and their attack. Their main focus is the United States of America. And then it says, against the mountains of Israel. A mountain is always a symbol of nations in the in biblical prophecy and here it says mountains plural nations of israel the crown colonies of the british empire australia new zealand canada here we see the united states 
and the crown colonies of the British Empire, as it says, which have always been waste, but is brought forth out of nations that dwell safely, that shall dwell safely, all of them. Perfect description of Australia, New Zealand, Canada. And then it says, you shall ascend and come like a storm. You shall be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with you. Here is this huge assembly that's coming into the prime target, the United States, but also Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. China is going to attack them, and Persia, Afghanistan, parts of Iran maybe, what is, whatever is left of Iran, and Western Pakistan is going to be part of this alliance, and they are going to come in and attack the nations of the West. Get that free article, Persia in Bible Prophecy, and our booklet, The Middle East in Prophecy, free of charge, off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends. I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.